has an impressive tradition of innovation that has transformed healthcare. Very fine luxury, but 2.6 billion people of the world today do not have any access to any basic sanitation. Our second presenter is Professor Robert Chambers. Robert is Research Associate at the Institute of Development Studies, Sussex. He describes himself as an undisciplined nomad. You'll see him in a minute, and maybe you'll agree, with development field experience mainly in East Africa and South Asia. Robert is going to tell us in eight minutes why he believes community-led total sanitation can transform the health and well-being of hundreds of millions of people by 2020. The BMJ in 2007 had a poll. Uh, the poll was for the um, most important medical advance of the past 150 years. Um, most of us will know that the biggest vote went to sanitation. One and a half billion people are reckoned to have Ascaris uh, parasites. 700 million people with hookworms. Over 2 million people a year still dying from the diarrheas. Liver fluke is between 40 and 70 million. Schistosomiasis um, is 200 million. Trachoma, hepatitis, typhoid, um, the zoonoses. I don't think people realise the enormity of the number of diseases and of their scale, but it's not just them, it's all of them, and it's their interaction. Where are the papers in the BMJ of a study of a particular child and all the multiple infections that that child is carrying and the effect of that on the nutritional status of the child? India has got 58% of the people who shit in the open in the whole world. My hypothesis is that there's a strong link between the undernutrition of so many children in India and faecal infections. And if you could cut out the faecal infections, a lot of the undernutrition would disappear. There's a host of diseases, and they can all be cut off here, under the anus. As a result of sanitation and hygiene, we in the north are very, very largely free of the whole mass of faecally related diseases and infections that we used to have, which we no longer have. But in the developing world, it had been obvious for many years that simply giving people modern toilets was not going to solve the problem. We think that we should do something for them. They are poor, they don't have money, they cannot afford toilets, give them toilets. You must remember a person whose income, daily income is less than a couple of dollars a day, you are giving him a toilet of $300? In Malawi, it was a funny situation. Their latrine was better than their own houses. You can just <laughs> imagine in a community, in a yes. village. If you ask them, why is it that you're not using that latrine? They will tell you, are you sure I should put shit in that, in that beautiful structure that is there, which is even better than my house. And so there were engineering designs and toilets were built, and it didn't work. It hasn't worked well anywhere in the world. Back in 1999, I was invited by WaterAid. They wanted me to lead one of the evaluations of one of their programs. It was a kind of a traditional, conventional sanitation program. Latins were constructed and some were used, some were not used, but you know, very nice money spent, everything was done. It was kind of a successful program, but I used to walk behind the villages and going to the fields and everything. Every village we went in, I stepped on shit. If the shit is there and one rain and everything, it's, you know, it's spreading everywhere. Number of increasing number of beautiful latrines, how does it help? Cholera, diarrhea, rampant sickness, and smelly. Let's go and try and understand from the people why do they defecate in the open? CLTS is not an innovation in the traditional sense, but it is a new way to communicate with people about the dangers of open defecation. Community-led total sanitation turns all these things on their head. There is no hardware subsidy. There is no engineering design. There is no teaching. There's only facilitating. Counting latrines built is not the main thing. The main thing is communities which declare themselves open defecation free. It's a question of empowerment. And once you empower them, we saw that they're building toilets costing $1, $2, even less. The facilitator very often says, look, we've not come here to give you anything. We've not come here to teach you anything. We've come here because we'd like to learn about your practices. Could you make a map of your community and show all the households? And so they do that. Where do you shit? And then they place it around where they, where they go and shit. And you <laughs> quite soon see 
the, the village surrounded by shit, which is a dramatic view, which is not normally experienced. And then after that, uh, there's walking to the area, and then you stand in the middle of all the shit and talk about it and how much is produced. And so there's a strong element of disgust. One of the things which was invented by um, a block development officer, she um, picked up some shit and brought it back and put it down in the group. So there's the shit in the group and then some boiled rice next to it. Then flies come and the flies will dance, start dancing about uh, between the shit and the rice. If you put paprika on the shit, the rice will gradually turn pink. <laughs> and, and I mean, that must be about as dramatic as you can get as a demonstration. And people are absolutely horrified. And the calculation of the amount of shit produced, which startles people out of their minds, usually. एक महीने में यानी कि वो जो गु है जो वो पूरा वो क्लाइमेट को और पूरे आसपास और गाय और ये कुत्ते वगैरह सब खा रहे मुझे इतनी हैरानी है इस बात की When all this has been has been done there's this point um, the point of ignition when somebody says but we're eating one another shit and this triggering usually leads to a village taking action खाना खाने के साथ भी खा रहे हैं वो गु टट्टी खा रहे हैं खा रहे हैं हां हां जा रहा है मैं देती हूं तो मुझे क्या नाम मिलेगा तो मैं तो यह समझती हूं कि इनको सबसे बड़ा नाम तो यही मिलेगा कि ना तो खुद गु खाएगी और ना किसी दूसरे को खाने देगी इससे बढ़िया हमें और क्या मिल सकता है अभी इस गांव में भी वो उन्होंने खड्डे अपने आप एक दिन में खोजना शुरू कर दिए कि हम बाहर जाना बिल्कुल पसंद नहीं करेंगे Disgust, self-respect, and shame—you know, what are we doing? I mean, 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 we can change the situation in which we are. This is a waking approach. That's when we started to think and sit down and say, okay, we are only working in few districts. Is it a possibility that we can reach out to the whole country? Today it's in more than 43 countries across Asia, Africa and Latin America. Well, this, this is a very substantial breakthrough. I don't think there's ever been a book before that's had the word shit in its title. <laughs> At least not from a respectable publisher. <laughs> shit matters. India, more than 700 million people having mobile telephones. More than 600 million defecate in the open. Shitting in the bush and talking in the mobile phone is a common scenario in the rural areas, you know.